This video is about the early days of the church that Dave and I planted in our little town. And uh, I found a video of Dave singing one of our favorite songs called The Trade by Brett Williams. And um, afterwards he does uh, communion. So I'm just gonna give you a little teaser, but if you'd like to listen to the very end, you can hear both of those. Mine, what's your sin? Your is my home. Righteousness, mine, what's your only shame? Your is my own confidence. You took all me. I want to talk all of you. Mine is the pain. Mine was the pain. I spent some time with a friend over the weekend and we were talking a bit about the early days of our church and how wonderful that was. And I've mentioned before, I think part of what was so glorious about it was that we really didn't have anything and God had to continually show us that he wanted us exactly where we were. Dave is the most humble man I've ever known. And even though he knew really clearly that God had called him to be a pastor, he wanted to make doubly sure every week that God still wanted him to be a pastor. So uh, he would often pray like that, Lord, it's going to be really easy for you to show us if you want us to um, stop doing this because we just won't have what we need to move forward. Because as I mentioned before earlier, um, Calvary Chapel prays over you and blesses you and lays hands on you and they send you out, but they don't provide for you financially because the, the feeling is where God guides, God provides. And if he's not providing, then it's probably not something you want you to be doing. And we really, really took that to the extreme. We, we never, in 20 years, we never passed a collection plate ever. It, it was just not something Dave wanted to do. And I loved him for that because you know how it is when you go to church and it comes by you and for all they know, you pay online, you know, you pay your tithes online, or maybe you're just really in a bad way and you, you can't put anything in that week. I never like for anyone to feel pressured. That always bothered me. So instead, we just had what we called an agape box, and it was in the back of the room. No attention was ever given to it. And if people felt so inclined to tithe, they would do so. Dave never discussed money once unless the passage that we were in dealt with it, dealt with tithing. And even then he just kind of rapidly went over it. <laughs> I think the uh, elders weren't always so happy that he did that, but Dave just didn't want to camp on it. He didn't want that to be the one time that someone managed to get their neighbor to church. And sure enough, like they always expect, you know, the pastor's talking about money, but I loved how God provided during that time. It was just amazing. I remember being at church in those early years and, and later on too, where we were always the last ones to leave church. and being just about ready to lock up and someone comes screeching in the parking lot. Oh, I got almost home and I realized I hadn't dropped off my tithe check. So people tithed. I mean, they, they, uh, it was an act of worship between them and the Lord, which is what it's supposed to be, of course. So that was really beautiful. But in those first days, you know, God just did show himself in remarkable ways and in ways you just couldn't deny. For instance, when we first started on Sundays. I did talk in another video, I think, about how we um, started out in a Grange in town. We were only there for a month. I believe that was in September. And in October, we found out that our local firefighters had a, they owned a Grange, or excuse me, a bingo hall, and they had bingo there, but they also rented it out for weddings. And they were allowing people to rent it out for $200 a day. So we approached them, Dave approached them, and one of our elders, I think we only had one at that time, but they talked to him and, and asked if we could be sure that we could have it every Sunday, and they said that would be fine. So they signed, um, you know, a contract, a lease, and we weren't thinking, we had $1,600 because t people had been tithing every Tuesday night at Bible study and we had been tithing and we had $1,600 saved up. And so we thought this is perfect, you know, $800 for four weeks in the month. And now we can, we're really set for October and November. Well, we weren't thinking first and last months, which of course meant that we had October's paid, but we didn't have anything paid for November or on, you know, <laughs> till we got to that last month. And so we had to really pray and just ask God to, to multiply what we had. And he did. 
we probably had about 20, 25 people, something like that, um, coming to church at that time. Very small amount of chairs in this really giant bingo hall with the wooden floors. <laughs> and You could just hear anybody walking anywhere in there because it echoed throughout the whole room and it was funny. But <laughs> I never dreamed we would ever be at a place where we could fill that room, you know. But anyway, um, we did have the money for October. And then when November came, I think we might have had $100, $150 the first week. And, you know, the second week we might have gotten another 100 but we were short. And by the third week, we had to pay during the fourth week. By that third week, we only had $300 toward our $500, or excuse me, our $800 rental fee. So we just stood around, you know, a group of us and, and prayed about it. Lord, if you want us to be here, we'll have that extra money. Well, one of our women had not been in touch with her dad since she was four years old and she was 35. So she hadn't seen him in 31 years. The internet was kind of new. Um, you know, not everybody had it, but it was, we were all kind of feeling our way through it, but she was a great researcher. And so she got online and she started looking for her dad and there were, I won't say his name, but there were only five that had his exact name that she could find in the country. And she narrowed it down to two men because they were of the relative right age and sent them certified letters and heard back from one and it was her dad. He lived in Florida. He was, um, he owned like ice skating rinks and apartments and things like that, I think. And so he, he flew out to see her immediately. She brought him to church and he was this tall, you know, cowboy looking guy, just really nice man. Said, you know, we, we all chatted a little bit. And then uh, she called me the next day and said that her dad, when he was leaving, had said, had written her a check and said, this is just a little money for now for you to be able to do something that you would like with it. And there'll be more coming because I'm not going to lose touch with you again. Well, he had written her a check for $5,000 and she tithed her 10% on it and it was $500. So we had exactly what we needed for November, which was just, it really increased all of our faith, I have to say. Well, then came December and a few more people were coming now and we we had almost the whole amount of our tithe, or excuse me, of our rent by about the third week. But Dave felt really strongly that we needed to have a Christmas Eve service. And so that was going to be another $200 because it was a, a Friday, I believe that, that year. And so we, we were, it looked pretty good that we were going to have the $800, but we didn't have another $200 that we needed. So in order to secure that building for that night for Christmas Eve, we had to uh, let the firemen know and bring them a check by, I think it was Tuesday, a Tuesday of that week. And again, on Sunday, we just, you know, stood around in a big circle and prayed and said, God, we believe you want us to have a Christmas Eve service, but, you know, um, we'll know because the money will be there. So it was Tuesday morning, or excuse me, like late Tuesday, not the morning, but kind of the late morning. And uh, Dave went out to our mailbox and brought back a letter from our sister-in-law, Dave's brother, Tom's wife, Debbie. And um, she started out by saying, I feel so bad. This has been sitting on my dresser for a couple of months now and I just forgot to mail it, but Tommy and I really want to support what you and Shannon are doing and so use this however you need to. And you, of course, you know it was a check for $200. <laughs> so we were able to have our Christmas Eve service and you know, it just went like that over and over and over because God wants to feed his people more than even we do, you know? And so he makes, when you lean on him, he shows himself to be your father. You know, I, I think sometimes there's a lot of hype and a lot of um, forcefulness about, you can go to the people and try to shake them down. I mean, for, for lack of a better term, I don't know what to say, but you know, I've been at churches where they really put the pressure on the people when they had a financial need. But when you place it all in God's lap and you look up and you trust him and say, we'll accept whatever your decision is, but this has to be from you, then he smiles on that. I really believe it. And one other thing that was so interesting about that early time was that Dave, um, we lived here in our town but we had gone down to um, Vancouver, Washington, because Dave was going to seminary in Portland. So we had moved down there. And then we went to a Calvary in Vancouver and met Denny and Lynette Martinez. He was our first Calvary pastor. And his cousin happened to be a Calvary pastor about 45 minutes from us. And they had just 
found each other. So they really didn't have, they had a new relationship, but it, it turned out that the two of those men sent us out. So that was really kind of wonderful. But when we moved back home, Dave was very conflicted because he didn't want to be the guy that, you know, blows into town and starts stealing sheep, if you know what I mean, you know, taking from, you know, other churches. And we see this all the time in our little town. We don't have a huge town here, but um, years ago when we were trying to sell a building, we had somebody research all the churches in town. There were 93 churches in our little town. I, I can't even believe that myself and I live here, because, but a lot of them were startup churches and, and a whole lot of them came from that, um, the whole seeker movement, you know, so there was a whole kind of a formula that they followed, but wonderful pastors. I mean, we met a lot of them and they were great people, but they'd really bought into that um, kind of mentality. And, and a lot of times our people would get flyers in the mail, come check us out, you know, and, and they'd get kind of mad. I remember people saying, we go to a church, why are they doing that? And anyway, I don't want to get into all that, but Dave had a very big conviction that he did not want to take any Christians, which is kind of funny when you're starting a church, but he said, no, he goes, we're just going to go down to the park in town and we're going to um, get to know some of the homeless guys down there. And then we're just going to grow our own Christians, <laughs> which I think is a beautiful idea. I do. I love that. But God just had other ideas and he was wiser, of course, because he knew that we needed other Christians, strong Christians to minister to the people and, and to hold our arms up and to be prayer warriors and, you know, all of those great things. So Christians were coming and Dave was more and more distraught. But one night I had a dream and I've had several dreams and visions and they've always been at a time when I needed those or, or one of us needed those. And they were really um, uh, path changers, if that makes sense. Like they turned our thoughts or our direction or our um, movement in another direction because God corrected it. So this one night I had a dream and it's very interesting because when I think about this dream, it's this, it looks exactly like the view of a pasture that we ended up seeing outside the window of a, of a building that we were renting in kind of a, a farm area. I mean, it was exactly that view, but we weren't there yet. So in the dream, Dave was standing with his hands behind his back in front of like maybe 10 of those long banquet tables. And they had um, these really pretty burgundy tablecloths on them, but they were just piled high with food. It was, you know, just really good food, no junk. It was meat and potatoes kind of things, kind of food. And as he's standing there, he's standing very still and he's watching out over the horizon. And I look and he's looking and I can see these tiny little spots, just little dots way on the other end of the pasture that start making their way toward us. And as they got a little bit closer, I could tell they were sheep. And then as they got really close to us, I could see that they were sheep that were so starved, their ribs were showing. And as I was waking up, God was saying to me, you don't worry about who comes, you just feed them. And that's what Dave had done. He'd prepared all this food for the banquet table. So. When I woke up, I said, uh, honey, God has a word for you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and don't we love it when someone else has the word for us, but we couldn't deny what the Lord was saying. And it was, it was a good word because at that time, I don't know of any other churches in our area that were teaching verse by verse through the Bible. I will, you know, fight with my last breath on the um, preeminence of that sort of teaching. The reason being because when you pick and choose topically, you can avoid all of the verses, all of the passages that make people um, squirm a little bit or that make you squirm a little bit, you know, because you're like, how am I going to teach this and not offend half the congregation? You can't do that. You have to just go head on into whatever passage is next. And I love it too, because um, God's word should always interpret God's word. We um, miss the full counsel of the word when we pick and choose what we're going to teach on. So if you want your people to be strong and well-fed and able to discern and able to um, understand God's word in context and not just, you know, favorite verses, then you can't avoid any part of God's word. So um, that was, at that time, I really, that dream made a lot of sense because we did have people come who were very used to um, a lot of entertainment, let's say, or, you know, a lot of skits and drama and different things, which there's nothing wrong with that. But if it's in place of good, solid teaching, then there is something wrong with it. You only have so much time, you know, and, and it should be devoted to the um, teaching of God's word. So anyway, that's my own opinion. But um, I, I love looking back on those times. And it was just fun with my friend to reminisce about all the times that 
God very clearly said, I do want you here and I'll let you know when I don't, you know. And eventually Dave did retire. We felt like God was allowing us to move on, but it, there were some pretty beautiful 20 years there. So I just wanted to share that. I hope it's encouraging and that there's something in there you can take for yourself because I don't know what your needs are, but he does. And if he can provide $500 when we need $500 and $200 when we need $200, he can provide for you what you need today, regardless of what that is. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us. Mine, what's your only sin? Yours is my own righteousness, mine. What's your only shame? Yours is my own confidence. You took all me. I want to talk all of you. Mine is the pain. Mine was the pain before. Yours is the heat I receive mine was the next and for yours is my life abundantly you took all me I want all of you Waiting here, feel your touch. Weight of sin seems too much. Freedom that you offer me is you. Mine is the victory. Your is the blood that purchased me mine is a blessed way yours is my love eternally you took all of me and i want all of you waiting here Freedom that you offer me is you. Mine is the victory. Yours is the blood that purchased me. Mine is a blessed way. Yours is my love. Eternally, you took all of me. I want all of you. You took all of me. I want all. giving us, Lord, a righteousness that we could never earn ourselves. And giving us, Lord, healing spiritually. The forgiveness that you give us, Lord. The presence of your spirit in our lives. The new life that you've given us, Lord. Uh, an inheritance in heaven. God, you've completely taken away all the, the fallenness, the the sinfulness 
that we were life tainted by sin and you've given us Lord your life and you've given us a faith Lord and I know there's some here Lord are carrying things they're just way beyond what we can manage way beyond what any of our resources can accomplish there is a desperation in life. It hits every one of us, Lord. It comes through every one of our doors at some point. God, for those who are in it this morning, I just ask, Father, that you would give them a, a touch of your spirit. Help them to know that you're with them. Help them to know the, that you are the God of authority over the wind and the waves over all of creation, over all of eternity. You are the one with authority, Lord. We put our faith in you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the peace that you give us. Fill our hearts, Lord, with, with refreshment today knowing that our sins are forgiven. As we partake of communion, Lord, would you do that again? Just help us to know the refreshment of forgiven sin, that we're right with you, that we can trust you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you, take and eat. And then he took the cup, and he said, this cup is the blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love for us. You're so good to us, Lord. We love you. We just want to follow you, Lord. Lord, as we leave this place, we pray that you would go before us and give us the faith to trust, Lord. In, in however, whatever we might find. Just give us the, your eyes, Lord. Thank you. Bless this church, Lord. And bless this day. In Jesus' name, amen.